Hi, welcome to one of the highest habitats in the Everglades, the hardwood hammock. We're standing on a limestone ridge known as the Miami Rock Ridge or the Atlantic Coastal Ridge. That is a mountain for the flat landscape of South Florida. The hardwood hammock is one of the few places that stays dry year round. A hardwood hammock is like an island of emerald forest that pops up around the Everglades. Each hammock is unique. They come in different sizes and they have different combinations of plants. Hardwood refers to the broad leaf trees. It is also called tropical because most hammock plants in Everglades National Park are from the tropics. So there you have it, a tropical hardwood hammock. But why is it called a hammock? Oh, right. Hammock is an old word that means high ground. Small family groups of first Calusa Indians and later Seminoles and Miccosukee Indians camped in the hammocks throughout the Everglades. They even planted crops in there. Let's go and check it out. Okay. A thick wall of tangled vegetation fringes the hammock because it gets so much sun on the outside. Lucky for us that a few hammocks are bisected with trails. The trail's over here. So what do you think now that we're inside? It's a lot cooler in here from all the shade. There's so much canopy cover here. Oh, look at the air plants. The hammock can be a few degrees cooler during the hot summer. Look up and you can see why. Mature hammocks have big, tall trees that form a closed canopy overhead. The canopy is like a sunshade that reduces the amount of sunlight inside the hammock. If you look down, you will see the limestone floor has quite a few solution holes. The groundwater in those deeper holes really turns up the humidity in here. Remember that impenetrable wall on the outside? Mm -hmm. I remember. That wall is like a wind deflector. Winds will dry everything out, including the soil. So, you're saying that the hammocks have wind protection from the edge, sun protection from the canopy, and high humidity from the groundwater. Right! And all that adds up to a very moist and humid hammock. The ground is so spongy here. This spongy organic soil above the limestone creates these big trees. Ferns, mosses, bromeliads, and orchids all thrive in this moist environment. What creates all the solution holes? Those big holes are the result of the tropical storms and hurricanes that happen every summer wet season in the Everglades. Fierce winds can rip out tall canopy trees whose shallow roots are entangled with the limestone rock. It's like ripping out root cables from the ground, which also takes out chunks of limestone. Natural weathering from water and chemical erosion is also slowly dissolving away the softer limestone. This hole will have water during the wet season, creating a home for small fish, crayfish, and invertebrates. These moist hammock islands are also a fire-sensitive habitat, which means they do not like fire. But hammocks are embedded in fire-dependent habitats, like prairies and pinelands. Fire generally stops at the hammock edge because of the moist, shady conditions inside. Fire burns hammocks only under very rare, extremely dry conditions. Fire can cook the hammock tree roots and burn that rich soil. 
You will learn more about fire later. There are so many cool looking plants, but the ground looks pretty open inside the hammock. Good observation. The ground underneath the understory is very sparse due to the lack of sunlight. Here's a gumbo limbo. Look underneath the bark and what do you see? That green bark has chlorophyll to carry out photosynthesis, just like a leaf. And here is the Lysoloma tree. Feel its smooth bark. Oh yeah, it is really smooth. Oh, is that a snail? Ah, you found the Florida tree snail. Right now, it's tucked inside its shell and glued to the tree. This is how they conserve moisture during the dry season. Soon, when the wet season comes around, the tree snails will become active and start grazing on tiny lichens that grow on the hammock trees. That reminds me of the strangler fig. The strangler fig begins life as a small seedling growing on a tree branch or crown. The seedling's roots grow downward and envelop the host tree. At the same time, the seedling grows upward to reach the canopy layer. What happens to the host tree? Sometimes it lives, but other times it dies, leaving just a hollow memory. That's pretty cool. Who lives here besides tree snails and solution hole critters? Tropical hardwood hammocks provide great cover for animals to avoid the intense heat of summer, wicked summer storms, fires, and occasional winter freezes. Most of the tropical plants provide fruits for birds to eat who also disperse the seeds. During spring and fall migration, migrating birds stop over in the hammock to rest and refuel during their long journey. The hammock day shift might include lizards, snakes, and butterflies like the zebra longwing. The night shift might include barred owls, small rodents, bats, and even the endangered Florida panther. This hardwood hammock at Royal Palm is part of the reason that Everglades National Park was formed. Early explorers were attracted and awed by the unique tropical nature and plant diversity of the hardwood hammock. They rallied to create Royal Palm State Park in 1916. This early conservation effort led up to the establishment of Everglades National Park in 1947. Wow, this is a fascinating mix of plants, animals, and people all coming together. Well, you'll see more hammock trees in the next habitat, but they will be a lot smaller. Hmm. You've got lots to learn. Good luck. Thank you for showing me around the hardwood hammock. It was my pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. Gee, da-da-da.